Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video today, we're building a budget gaming PC for just under £350. And I'm excited to show you what we're building today because you'll see by the end of the video that it's going to look insane. Without further ado, let's get on with the PC build. Now like we do with a lot of our budget builds, we're going to be using a Machinist B450. The reason we choose these boards a lot of the time for these builds is because I picked them up for under £40 and this one here only cost me £36. For the CPU, we've gone for the Ryzen 5 5500. We picked up this CPU and a 5600 for £99 off AliExpress back in November. I decided to value the Ryzen 5 5500 at £45 and the 5600 at 55 just because it's that little bit better. Now I can't help but laugh at the name of this RAM. I often wonder if these Chinese manufacturers just make these names up for a joke. But right here we've got some Juho DDR4 16GB at 3600MHz. Now we only paid £19.48 for this kit of RAM, it's CL18 so as long as it's stable and works fine it's going to make a great choice. Now for storage once again we've gone with this Crucial P3 Plus 1TB SSD. As mentioned in the last video yes this is a Gen 4 drive in a Gen 3 motherboard but we did buy three of these for £117, so roughly around £39, so we paid only £40 for this 1TB SSD. Now for the CPU cooler, we went with this Johnsbo CR1400 EVO, which is a nice little 90mm CPU cooler, and it actually does a really good job, as I've known from previous builds. We only paid £14.50 for this cooler. Now for the case, we went with this IONS Dual Dynamic RGB Rainbow, which is a bit of a weird name, but that's what it says on the box. But pretty much, this was purchased from Amazon, but it was used, and it was only £40 because it didn't come with fans. But I just installed some Thermal right fans, which cost me an additional £15. So for the case and the fans, it comes to a total of £55. For the power supply, we went with this Corsa CX600, which is a 600 watt unit, and we purchased this off eBay for £20.50. We then plugged in all the USB, audio and front panel connectors. Now, when you're building a PC for your first time, this can be quite overwhelming with how many different headers and connectors there are on a motherboard, but it is pretty easy once you've done it a few times. It's just long and boring, especially the front panel connectors, because sometimes the diagram on the motherboard may be really hard to read. So in that case, you can use the owner's manual. For the graphics card we went with this EVGA GTX 1080 which we got off eBay for £99.06. Now for you guys that are new to PC you may have never heard of EVGA but they were quite a big company back in the day and they made a lot of really nice graphics cards but they stopped making graphics cards after the 30 series. We also included some cable extensions in this build which are from Formula Mod and these only cost us £8.20 and we also used an RGB controller from Metalfish which we got off AliExpress for £7. We then plugged in all the cable extensions for the motherboard and the graphics card and we tidied them up the best we could as well. But now, let's see how the build turned out. Overall, I'm really happy with the aesthetic of this PC, but now let's go and test it in some games. 
Now first we tested this PC in Fortnite and we were playing at 1080p on performance mode slash competitive settings. I think this is the ideal settings really for this PC. Another thing to note is for Fortnite as well, the audio is absolutely messed up because I had two audios being outputted in OBS and I didn't realize until after this game. But in Fortnite, we've seen an average of 220 FPS, which I think is pretty decent for a 350 pound PC. So if you're a competitive player and you play a lot of Fortnite, this is a good way to get into PC gaming and get off consoles. Next we tested Counter Strike 2 and this was at the settings that was just recommended which was very high. I'm pretty sure that a lot of CSGO players will probably play on lower settings, maybe high textures. But I just decided to try out the very high preset. And it honestly surprised me, we had an average of around 180 FPS. And our 1% lows weren't too bad either. And as you can see from the River Tuna stats, our CPU and GPU temps were looking pretty good as well. Now I don't play CSGO and I don't intend to, so this was me fighting a bunch of bots and then in the end dying to them as well. Now for GTA 5 we played at 1080p on the max settings, so very high, and I did actually enable a 120fps cap in River Tuna. And this is only because in the last PC video we done, we were getting a lot of FPS but with GTA 5 anything above 120 to 130 FPS causes a lot of stutters and FPS drops so I decided to cap the FPS for that reason but still we averaged around 120 FPS and the game felt really smooth and our 1% lows were extremely good as well so that's going to be it for this video guys, so in future I do plan to include more benchmarks within these PC builds but as always I left it quite late and this video was all edited and recorded about 2 hours before this was uploaded. But I have just purchased Black Myth Wukong so what I will do is download that onto our benchmark SSD so that we have a more demanding and recent game to benchmark as well. Also let me know in the comments other games you'd love to see in these benchmarks for the PC builds because obviously these videos are for you guys so if I can include games that you enjoy then we're all happy. But anyway I hope you all have a good day and I'll see you all soon.